Let's start uh, our new series, uh, MPLS Basic to Advanced with Traffic Engineering. So MPLS stands for uh, the multi-protocol level switching because traffic will be switched based upon uh, labels. If you are uh, familiar with the traditional IP network, where traffic is forwarded based upon the IP, right, of the networks. So in MPLS, traffic will be switched based upon the labels that we will study in detail. So uh, let's uh, see a quick historical point of view related to the multi-protocol label switching. So uh, if you talk about old days, let's say we had one customer who is asking for a dedicated link uh, between his different sites, right? And apart from that, he also wanted to have privacy of uh, the traffic or the subnet that he is using in his company or in his own network, right? So here uh, with privacy, I don't mean uh, encapsulation or something. So the term that I mentioned here is, it means that the customer is asking that uh, the subnets or the networks that he's using in his own network, they uh, should not uh, get merged with any other uh, customer, okay? So what were the solution uh, back those days? Uh, there was frame relay, right? So, but if, <clears throat> If you are familiar how the uh, you know frame relay works is it was a flat L2 and a L L1 or L2 path that uh, the ISP used to provide to a customer, right? So for example, it worked like this. So let's say the customer is asking for a dedicated uh, connection uh, between his hub site. And uh, let's say this is uh, uh, two different location of that customer. This is, let's say, this is let's say site one and uh, this is site two right so what the isp will do is they will provide a dedicated uh, link between uh, all the sites that the customer wanted let's say this is the hub site and two uh, remote sites so the isp uh, used to provide a dedicated link right it was a flat layer one or you can say uh, just a layer to link between your uh, different locations that's it so now it's your job to run uh, any uh, dynamic protocol or something to exchange the routes right so let's say uh, this is my hub location and uh, let's say we are running eigrp right between my hub location and uh, my remote locations right so just they used to provide you just the connectivity between your different sites and their job is done, right? So now it's your responsibility to configure your devices, to port the routing protocol and all and exchange the information. Also, let's say uh, apart from the connectivity between your uh, sites, the customer also wanted to have an internet connection. So in that case, let the ISP will provide a different connection, right? Let's say you also wanted uh, a internet connection at your hub site, right? So the ISP used to provide you a separate connection for that. And for that, uh, they were charging uh, you some extra money, right? For that, because they are providing you a separate dedicated connection for internet. So that is why the cost was a bit high back those days but now when we are using mpls so with a single uh, link or uh, i would say with a single mpls connection you can have uh, the connectivity between your uh, different sites and also with the same link you can use internet right so it's a bit simple now so and also cost is low right as compared to the frame relay technology and all because Back those days, if you wanted uh, the connectivity and as well as the internet, then uh, you had to pay double, right? Okay. Let's see what's next. Okay, one more thing uh, before we move to the next slide. So as we see in the uh, frame delay, let's say if you log into your uh, hub router or you, one of the edge router of uh, your hub location, right? And let's say we were running EIGRP, right? So you uh, needed to form the neighborship 
I mean, there was a direct neighborship between the different locations, right? Let's say this is uh, router number two, this is router number three, and this is router number one. So if you are at R1 and you are uh, doing a show CDP neighbor, let's say, then you will see both these uh, routers, right? In the CDP neighbor, you will see R2 and as well as you will see R3, right? Because as we discussed, the ISP was providing you a flat connection, right? It was a flat layer to connection. So uh, your device is used to see each other directly in this uh, CDP neighbor, right? But in MPLS, this is uh, not the case. In MPLS, you are going to have the connective because let's say this is your edge router at the hub location. So you are not going to make a direct connection between your uh, other location. So before that, there will be the ISP device, which is going to make neighborship with you. And there will be another ISP device that is going to make neighborship with your another location. So you will, you will send the route to the ISP device from here. And now it's the job of the ISP to exchange your routes. And then from this ISP, it will send the route to your spoke locations. Same is the case with your third location. There will be another ISP connection. And uh, this is how it works, right? So in MPLS, you will not be having the uh, direct connectivity between your S device, but you will be having neighborship with the ISP devices, okay? So this is another difference between uh, MPLS and uh, the traditional frame relay, I would say. So this is uh, what I have written here uh, that we already discussed. The very first point is MPLS works on peer-to-peer -peer basis. Two different sites devices will not form peering with each other like frame relay but with ISP, right? That we already discussed. The second uh, bullet point that I mentioned, this one also we already discussed that uh, in case of frame relay, there was a separate internet connection that was needed, right? So the cost was a bit high, but now with MPLS, we can fulfill uh, both the requirement with one single link. And in, uh, if you talk about the traditional IP routing, if you are uh, familiar with it, so let's say uh, we have this 1.1.1 network at R1 and we have this 4.4.4 network at R4. If we are doing a ping, if I'm doing a ping, let's say 4.4.4.4 from R1 using the source, let's say this is the uh, loopback zero IP at R1. So loopback zero. So now in a traditional network, how does it work? So I'm at R1. So I need to go to 4.4.4, right? So router one will check its routing table and it will see how to reach 4.4.4. .4. So in that case, it will find out what is the next hop for this particular destination. So here, the next hop is, let's say 12.0.0.2, right? Now, it finds out what is the next hop for this particular uh, destination. So now, again, there will be a second lookup in the routing table to find out how to, reach, uh, how to reach this next hop, right? So then it will find out, okay, so this is the uh, exit interface to reach this particular next hop. So now the traffic, it will forward the traffic or fast ethernet zero by zero. And now the packet reaches to R2. Same thing now, R2 is going to check. It is going to check its uh, routing table. It is going to find out how to reach 4.4. It will send the packet here. The packet will reach at R3. It is again going to check 4.4.4 .4 in its routing table. And based upon that, it, it will also do the recursive lookup to find out what is the exit interface. And finally, the packet will arrive at R4. So in the traditional IP uh, routing, let's say you do not have this 4.4.4 .4 network at R2. So these 
two IPs, 1.1.1.1 .1 .1 .1 .1 and 4.4.4.4, .4 .4 .4 .4 they cannot communicate with each other, right? As soon as the packet reaches at R2, let's say it doesn't have this 4.4.4, .4 .4, the traffic is going to be dropped. Or let's say it has the route, but R3 doesn't have, have this information. So R3 is going to drop this packet, right? But in MPLS, so I'm just giving you a uh, quick overview, right? Uh, we are just, uh, we'll see uh, when uh, we go into the uh, lot more details of MPLS, but I'm just uh, giving you a heads up for, uh, I mean, how the traditional IP routing works and in MPLS, so let's say this is the provider edge router, which is connected to uh, one of the customer. Let's say this is the customer CE. This is the router, which is uh, at the customer location. And let's say this is the PE router, the ISP router, right? This is also the P router, the ISP router, which is connected to the another location of the same customer, CE2, right? So in that case, in the MPLS VPN, let's say uh, there is some network 10.1.1.0 slash 24 at this site. So if CE1 wants to send this particular subnet, to CE2. So it will advertise this particular network to the PE. Now there will be a IBGP neighborship between these two PEs. Okay. So this particular subnet will not be visible to R2 and R3. So R2 and R3 does not need to have this particular subnet to route the traffic unlike the traditional ip routing that we discussed right because in traditional ip routing the destination uh, must be present in the routing table of each hope right as soon as we lose the connectivity uh, on any hope your traffic is going to be dropped but in mpls only the edge devices that will study in deep only they know these routes and uh, all the transit devices, they will just switch the traffic based upon labels. They don't have the actual information. Actual information is present only on the edge device. Okay. So this is how the MPLS is going to work. So we will see each and every topic in a great detail one by one. Okay, so before we uh, go into the actual uh, MPLS uh, details and uh, all the uh, topics, first we will uh, uh, see a quick overview of this foundation topic, which is the VRF flight, because uh, there is extensive use of VRFs in MPLS, right? So uh, it's my personal opinion that uh, if you're not familiar with the VRF flight, then uh, I mean, first of all, you should uh, know what VRF flight is and how it works and what is the drawback of using VRF flight and why we don't use it in MPLS, okay? So uh, we are uh, going to see uh, the VRF flight in our next lecture with a quick small uh, practical also. Okay, so if you have any suggestion or any feedback, any query, so you can write in the comment section or you can also write me an email. Uh, maybe you uh, want me to discuss some another topic or any problem. So I would love to discuss that. Thank you.